So in light of the recent videos I've done about communications, we've done some rather big radios. Now today we're focusing on a really small radio. This one is AM, FM, shortwave, and weather band. It's the Ratty RF750. Let's check it out. Alright everybody, welcome back. So now with shortwave becoming more and more popular due to global issues, we start to see that it might be a really good idea to have a shortwave radio in your emergency preps. This one in particular would be awesome for say a bug out bag or a get home bag because of its size. Now I am very, very much zoomed in on it, but you can see by my hand how tiny this little radio is. This thing has NOAA weather radio. It also has a NOAA alert, which you can set. So when there's an alert on the frequency you're listening to, it will let you know. It is battery operated. It has AM, FM, and shortwave, but it's a limited shortwave band. There's not all the shortwave bands in there, but a good, a good sampling of where they'd actually be talking going on and uh, where there'd be radio shows going on. I believe it's 5.7 to 17.9 megahertz. Okay, you have a 9.85 inch wire antenna. This also has six different equalization modes. I know it's weird in such a tiny little radio to have all this. And it is also a Bluetooth music player. So you can connect to this via Bluetooth. It also has back on the back here a place for a trans flash card if you're interested in doing uh, some uh, music off of your flash card. We're going to run this thing through its paces. I'm going to show you its different operations. But I wanted to give you a little bit of information on this thing, first of all. Now, this has a very kind of old-school battery. It's a lithium-ion battery, but what it reminds me of is the old Nokia batteries, you know, from the Nokia cell phones. So when you get this, the battery won't be in it. Let's uh, pop open the back here. But you can see what the battery looks like. It's a BL, uh, BL, uh, was it BL5C, I believe. And that will just slide right in there, real easy. And it is rechargeable. You see there's a USB-C port right there. It does come with a charger, and it also comes with a strap. Uh, the strap is um, to connect to that top piece right there. So let's make sure we can get this all in the video because I haven't really zoomed in here. And that will be a handy way for you to carry this um, in your, on your gear or in your gear. What I like about it is the size and the features. Um, of course, any radio this small is going to be a little bit of a compromise. But this thing has so many features in it that it allows you to do a ton of things with such a small package. And it's super, super lightweight. So this isn't going to be something that's bogging you down. It also kind of has that cool old-school military retro look to it. Now we're going to go through all the, uh, all the things on this at first. There are a ton of different lights and indicators and everything. But I'm going to give you a little bit of uh, information on the radio now. As you know, this comes with a USB-C charging port. It charges up very quickly. It's considered a preparedness radio or emergency kind of bug-out radio from the company itself. That's Raddy. Um, R-A-D-D-Y is their name. It has your no alert, which I mentioned before. Now, the band areas. Okay, you got AM from 520 to 1710. You got FM from 87 to 108, pretty standard. And we mentioned shortwave. Now, shortwave band is limited on this from 5.7 megahertz to 17.9 megahertz. But you can also pick up the weather band on this and get alerts when there's something going on on that particular band. This supposedly has improved perception from the little bit of playing around I've done with it. It actually does pull in the signals pretty well. Uh, it has an embedded DSP chip to improve sensitivity. That will also enable you to set the spacing and frequency for listening to your stations loud and clear. However, in a radio this small, you're going to have to tune very, very slowly to pull in the signals. If, you, if you're one of these people who just flings the dial back and forth, you're going to miss a lot. You're going to very, very slowly and you'll catch signals. It does come in very clear, it's easy to tune, it's just you got to move a little bit slower than most radios. So what I'm going to do is back up the camera a little bit so we're not like into, the, into this thing and you miss half, the, half of what I'm showing you. And we're going to play with it a little bit and then we're going to try outside with a, an extended antenna. I'm going to clip an alligator clip on the end here and I'm going to throw up an extended antenna and see how well this thing performs with that antenna. Alright, so just looking at the top, you have your power button, your set button your forward and backward buttons here if you're playing on the trans flash card your rewind and your band okay this is your volume control here and you'll just move that back and forth i'm going to see if i can show you moving it there we go on the side here you'll have your choosing uh you, what you're going to choose to do with this you can do radio you can do the uh with the flash card and you can do the play on the end there so you just move it however you want to do it okay now when you turn it on it will say radio 
Okay, and you've got your little meter here. This will, this will adjust your VU meters and your volume meters, your signal strength meters. This all becomes a meter on top here. Let me turn on the radio so you can better understand what I'm talking about. There we radio. go. A little bit of a light show, and it says radio. Okay. Now, this is on a... There we go. Currently on the weather band. Turn up the volume a little bit. Saturday, sunny. So you can hear the weather band really, really well. Okay. I'm going to take it to the FM band, and again, I'm just going to play a talk station because I don't want to get copyright strikes on me or anything. So let's move band here. Now you see what I mean by how how slow you have to tune. And you will see along here the band where you are on the band. <laughs> Don't worry, see? eBay Motors has so you do have to tune very, very slowly when you're using that. Let's move on to the next band. And that is your first shortwave band. And I doubt you're going to hear anything on shortwave in here. And you definitely won't hear anything on AM. You can almost hear WWB in there. When we take it outside with the antenna, it's going to definitely improve the signal a whole lot. But again, with all the lights in here and everything, and it's like I said, AM band, you're not going to pick anything up on. So I'm going to take it back to FM. Let me get it back on there. Okay. I'm Brian Gonzalez, checking the Valley Roadway. I'm going to find a talk station, sorry. Mistakes. All right, now let me show you the, uh, the meters. <laughs> This is your standard display here. You're going to hit that. That's your signal strength. You see how strong the signal is all the way full. That's kind of a VU meter. Now, if you don't want any meter at all, you can just hit that, and you won't have any meter at all. That might be handy for when you want it a little bit darker. I just turned down the volume. When you want it a little bit darker and not, you know, in your, in your face with people seeing what's going on. But as you can tell, that's your regular display. And that will give you an idea of what's going on here. You have all sorts of different little features on here. So you can turn that on and off if you want to use the enhanced. Um, let me get that over there. There we go. So that will give you uh, a little more of an enhanced signal. Of course, now I've moved to the wrong band. <laughs> Back on FM. That's AM. You're not going to hear anything on AM on this little guy. Not in here, especially with our crummy AM reception. So anyway, let me turn off the radio. Let's get it set up outside and try it out here and see how well it works with uh, it uh, having the extended antenna on it on the shortwave bands. All right, so you'll see how I have the wire connected there, and it's just kind of running down this way all the way back over to the front of my porch. And I just have it strung up here over my cable internet wire and down. So we're going to connect it to the radio and... Uh, See what we can pull in. Got okay, a little past 10 megahertz there. We have somebody breaching or something. Can't really make it out. I do have the antenna connected. And for those wondering, that is the alligator clip that just clips onto the antenna. And you don't need to extend it this far. You can make it a lot shorter. So you're getting something in there. Again, this isn't the best time for shortwave reception. But let's turn around and see if we can find anything else. Here's WWV. You hear the clock ticking in the background. Like I said, this isn't really the best time for shortwave. But we're getting something, so that's good to see. The antenna is uh, pulling in some signals. Remember, the higher up you get this antenna, the better it will be. And you go there. Definitely good reception on that. Let me show you the difference. Let's disconnect the antenna for a second. Okay, nothing. So it's definitely pulling in short waves. That's really nice to see. Not that I can understand what they're saying. <laughs> All right, let's get it back up on the table. I'll finish it up and do the final specs. Tell you where you can pick up one of these kind of unique little radios for not too bad of a price. All right, so one of the things I wanted to demo with this quickly is the Bluetooth and connecting it. It's very, very simple. You're just going to turn your 
thing to BTE there, Bluetooth, this is radio. You're going to go to Bluetooth in the center there. You're going to turn on the radio, and it will do its little dance. Bluetooth mode. It says Bluetooth mode. What you want to do is hit this button here, okay, and start it. What you want to do is hit this button here, and hit that, and there you go. You'll see it's polling now. We're going to look for it here. I'm going to do a quick little search here and look for available devices on my phone. I don't know if you can see it's searching down there. But it is looking, and it showed up before, so I hope it shows up again, or I'll feel kind of silly. There we go. RF750. We're pairing with it. Pair. The Bluetooth pair successfully. Bluetooth paired successfully. So that's how easy it is to do. Now, if I want to play something on my phone, like music or something, I can do that, and it will play through the radio. So that's really a neat little feature. You do have your, um, your card play on the end here, if you push it that way. And it will play the Transflash card if anything's in there. Of course, there's not anything there. And you always go back to the radio. Radio. See? There you go. So you go back to the radio, however you want to do it. Now, right now, I have this Some winds will pick up later this afternoon. Yeah. The weather man. So let me turn that off. And that's how easy it is to pair with Bluetooth. So all in all, I think it's a really neat little system. And by the way, for those of you wondering, I'm sure I'm going to get questions on it. I did a video on making this little uh, antenna here. A while back, it's just a wire with an alligator clip on one end and some some uh, paracord on the other for a loop. You can hang this up anywhere and get yourself a decent shortwave antenna. The length doesn't matter. Longer better, higher better, but the length doesn't matter. As long as you get something outside of your house, you're getting a better reception. So that's how I did that. But anyway, that is the little the little system here. This is what it comes with. I'm going to stick this up here for a minute. This is your strap, okay? And you'll just feed that through there and strap it on. And this is your charging cable. It's a USB-C charging cable. Very easy to use. Let me back you out a little bit here. There we go. So you can see what I'm doing. So, what about the radio? Well, the price on it is about $42.99, so $43. Bucks. Little on the expensive side. However, given all the things this does and is capable of doing, pretty darn cool. One of the things I was thinking about with this is um, setting up some instructions on maybe uh, bugging out or maybe leaving a, a flash card in there for a family member, you know, where uh, it tells them, all right, before you leave, shut off the gas, shut off the water, get the bug out bags that are located here. Just a voice message, kind of things like that. Very, very helpful when, say, your spouse or significant other is home and the world's going to you know what, and, you know, they're like, I'm just tell them, turn on the radio, set it on that, and hit the button and it will play. So you'll be able to kind of record a little bit of a message or something like that. Also, too, you can do books on tape. You can do instructions. Um, you know, maybe some survival and prep kind of stuff on there. Either way, it's a neat little feature to have in there. Not necessary, but kind of cool. And as you can see, the shortwave uh, reception on it is very good. Unfortunately, I can't test AM because we don't have AM reception out here. <laughs> we had one station that used to come in really well, and it just doesn't do anything. I've actually been thinking about buying a very low-power AM transmitter and playing some uh, non, uh, non-copyright restricted music on it just so we could test AM reception, but that's kind of cheating, I think, because you're just picking it up from across the room. So, the link for it will be down below. I do, again, I do like the look on this. It's kind of a old 70s military style radio. Again, if it didn't work well, I wouldn't care about the look. It would not be a, not be a thing for me, but I like the look on it. And it seems to do very, very well. I do like the fact that it is rechargeable because that allows me to throw out a solar panel outside of maybe my bug out location, outside of wherever I'm stuck in an emergency. Throw out a solar panel, connect this to it, and it charges it up. And I can listen all night. You will get about 10 hours of um, listening time on it. From my experience, I left it out here um, the other day in the morning. I turned it on to an FM station, an FM talk station, and just kept it at a medium volume, went back inside, Came back, and it was about 10 hours by the time it was finally uh, dead and done. I kept checking on it. So your battery source, again, is that little Nokia-style type old-school battery back there. You can still buy those on Amazon, by the way. And, and probably, I think I saw them in Walmart a while back because they had them for the cordless phones. You know, the cordless landline-type phones. Uh, the brand, again, is Radio Oddity, uh, or Ratty. They call it Ratty. Band-supported or shortwave AM, FM, and weather. Hardware interface is a Type 3 USB-C, so you're going to be really, really quick on the recharging. You do have Bluetooth. The weight on this is 0.16 pounds. This is super, super lightweight. I'm going to put that antenna down before I break it. 
but this is really lightweight. Um, it's a little bit on the blocky side, but as far as weight goes on it, and this is with the battery in, it is super, super lightweight. So no problems carrying that around, not extra weight really. Your item dimensions, okay? 2.4 inches by 1.5 inches by 3.5 inches. Super, super small and lightweight. So for something, say, for a bug-out bag, and I'm going to put this through while we're talking on here, uh, for, for a go kit, for any kind of emergency, even a get-home bag, um, I would not hesitate to recommend this type of a little radio here. There you go. Get that strap on there. I do think it's just very, very convenient, easy to use. Um, once you play around with it a little bit, now the instructions are very, very good, actually. You've got one whole page of instructions from right to left in English. The other is in German. And uh, the instructions are really, really good and easy to read, easy to understand, and very, very simple. So, nice little radio. Not too expensive. I mean, it's a little bit on the pricey side for a small shortwave, but you see the quality is there and the, the actual reception was there. I was able to pull in stations using that external antenna. And your external antenna doesn't have to be this big. I have a little, like, 14, I don't know, 14 gauge wire, a little tiny spool that I picked up in Radio Shack years ago, and I taped a a bullet to the end of it, you know, kind of like wrapped it around and taped it with some duct tape so I can take it and throw it in just an empty bullet, you know, not a uh, not an actual live round, just the bullet itself. So I can take it and throw it up into a tree and the weight from that bullet will kind of swing around the tree and hold it up there. And uh, this thing's about that big and it's got a little alligator clip on the end. So you can design an external antenna for this any way you want. There are no plugs anywhere here for an external. So generally, if you're going to take something like this, say in an emergency kit, I would invest in some kind of external antenna and probably smaller than this one. I just used that because that's what I had. So that is the Ratty RF750 portable AM/FM shortwave weatherband radio receiver and Bluetooth speaker. Whole lot crammed in there. Um, we're going to try it out long term. I'm actually going to keep this out here um, and test it. You know, that's what I do when I'm actually working out here is I'll run this thing around and test it or if I'm cleaning my car or whatever and we'll see how it holds up. Anyway, folks, I thank you for watching. The link for this will be down below. It'll also be in my Amazon affiliate store. If you're interested in some of the gear you see in my channel, me using from time to time, just check out the affiliate store below. That's our freeze dry wholesaler link. If you click that link, you're going to save 15% on your order from them. Uh, right now is a really good idea to start stocking up on some uh, emergency preparedness foods. Good long shelf life on it, 25 year shelf life on most of the foods. Some things are a little bit shorter, maybe 10 years. Um, definitely easy to carry, easy pack. You know, it's, in, it's not in big, huge cans. It's in plastic Mylar bags, very, very thick Mylar bags. So check them out. Below that are my Patriot supply link. That's preparewithiridium.com, preparewithiridium.com. For those of you just getting started out, if you want to get a three-month three kit, you can get that, boom, at your door within a few days or a week or so. I think they're a little bit slower now. It used to be two-day shipping, but, of course, with all the people buying food, it's a little bit longer. Um, and you get $150 off by using my link. That's preparewithiridium.com. $150 off. That link will be down below. And our Thrive Life freeze-dried food store. I have a Thrive Life video coming up. They have their spring sale going on right now. So check it out. See what's on sale. You can save a whole lot of money. Anyway, folks, thank you for watching. Stay safe and stay prepared.